Welcome back guys and thanks for checking out this video. It's finally time for some more 8th gen SI content. Um, for those of you that are new or don't know, this is my 2008 Civic SI. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of videos on this car. I basically did full bolt-on, tuned it, and a bunch of different videos and some tests with this car. And it's, it's back, it's time to do some more videos and I have something really cool lined up for this. I, uh, I contacted my good friends at JSpec Performance in Markham, Ontario. They are a PRL dealer because I wanted to get this car a turbo kit. So JSpec talked to PRL for me and we worked out a deal and they gave me a really good deal on one of their turbo kits. So I pulled the trigger, ordered their turbo kit and I have it and I have all the bits and pieces to do the job. So it is time to turbocharge the 8th gen Civic Si. So I have the kit and I was going to just go through the kit a little bit for you guys. So I have the kit here, I've opened it up. I was gonna show you kind of what's in the box. Uh, this kit I ordered basically complete minus turbo, minus fuel system and minus ECU. I think that's all the stuff that they offer uh, because I, I wanted a specific turbo. I already had a Flash Pro and I already had kind of the, the stuff for the fuel system. So I didn't really need any of that. But so basically I just ordered their full kit minus that stuff. And their kit is fantastic. It is extremely inclusive. It has all kinds of stuff like the stuff you'll need for heat management, all the little things that make the turbo kit difficult. It has all the stuff to do the intake air temperature sensor conversion, so you no longer have to have the mass airflow sensor. Um, all the tubing and oil feed line and drain line, uh, all the charge piping, the couplers, the clamps, uh, the downpipe, the dump tube, the blow off valve, the wastegate. It is extremely comprehensive kit. I'm super excited to see how this goes together. Um, over here, I have already taken the turbo manifold out of the box and the packaging. I wanted to check it out. It is a super nice piece. They do a really good job on this turbo manifold. It's a ram, it's sort of a ram horn style turbo manifold. It is a T3 uh, flange for the turbo. Uh, the turbo that I went with is, surprise, surprise, the infamous Boosted Boys Garrett replica of the GTX 3582R dual ball bearing turbo. I've tuned countless cars with this turbo and it performs very well and is super inexpensive. Uh, it fits the budget for this build and realistically if I want more or if it's not enough, it, the turbo can always be upgraded but this is such good bang for the buck, it's hard to not, it's hard to say no to this turbo. Um, additionally, I have a Dietchworks 340 liter per hour pump, I believe it was, and a set of 1000 cc injectors for my good friends at Performance Fuel Injection. Uh, they have awesome deals on injectors. This is a set of their 1000 cc injectors. So we're gonna be running them. Uh, the car is already tuned on Flash, Honda to Flash Pro. So I'm gonna stick with Honda to Flash Pro. And um, it, when I tuned it NA, full bolt on, it made 218 wheel horsepower, I believe it was. And I was surprised. This motor has a lot of kilometers on it. That is my only concern with this project and turbocharging it is this engine has 330,000 kilometers on it, which is over 200,000 miles. Uh, that is a lot. And, but this thing is super strong. It doesn't burn any oil. This is like a very healthy K-series. So I'm curious to see how it will hold up with the turbo setup. If it fails, I'm not concerned. I have a spare K20 for this thing. Also, I have a bunch of K24s. So we'll just do some sort of engine swap if this engine happens to fail due to the turbo setup. But uh, I'm very curious to see how it's gonna hold up long-term with the turbo setup. Um, the one hiccup that I had with this project is the clutch. I had wanted to run a Yanaka twin disc clutch on this um, and I've been waiting for a while. Yanaka is out of stock and they just don't have, the timing's not gonna work out. So we're gonna send it with the stock clutch. That might sound crazy, but it is not the first time. I have actually tuned over the years many K-series with stock clutches, and they, they've been known to hold over 400 wheel horsepower. And that's kind of the goal that we're shooting for with this setup. Uh, I would like to see well over 400, but we are sticking with the stock returnless style fuel system for now with just the upgraded fuel pump. So we're gonna be limited to around 400 and something. So I think we might be able to get away with the stock clutch. This clutch is not the original clutch because when I got this car, it had a broken transmission. We swapped in a 9th gen Civic Si transmission with a 9th gen Civic Si clutch at the same time. That clutch was super mint. It, was, it showed hardly any use uh, and it had less than 90,000 kilometers on it. 
So it's in very good shape. It seems super healthy, it seems super strong, and I'm hoping it'll hold up to the 400-ish wheel horsepower that we're planning to push with this turbo setup. But if it slips, not the end of the world, we'll just wait till we can get our hands on a proper clutch. For now, it'll at least get us up and running and hopefully it holds up to the abuse of the turbo setup, but it'll make for interesting content, I think, either way. So all that being said, uh, I'm not actually gonna do the install on this because I just don't have the time to do it and my RSX is tying up the hoist and it's not even close to being done. So I'm gonna get a friend to help and do the install on this setup for me because that will mean it'll get done much quicker. I think he will probably have this all done in like a week or two, which means you guys will be able to see this fairly soon. Um, so it's, I think it's about time to drop the car off to him and get started with this build. All right guys, so the car's over here with my friend Rui of Mateus Racing. He's the one doing all the install for me. Uh, if you don't know him, check out his Instagram. I'm gonna, I'm gonna link it there, but uh, he has already started taking the car all apart and prepping it for the turbo install. He's got the front end off in preparation to mount the intercooler and the intercooler piping. And he's already got the header off and started installing all the heat management stuff that PRL provides. And PRL does a great job with their kit. They provide all of this heat management stuff like the fire blanket and the wrap. And it really goes a long way to making sure that you don't have a fire back here because that is my biggest concern with eight gens is there's so much heat back here from the turbo and the turbo manifold and the downpipe that if you don't shield important things from it, uh, you could definitely have an engine fire. So Rui's done a great job of protecting things. Uh, he's already run the oil line, the turbo manifolds installed. He's just about ready to take off the oil pan, drill it and weld it for the return for the turbo. And uh, then he'll start putting the turbo together, the turbo on, the wastegate, the downpipe, start connecting things, install the intercooler piping. So uh, I'm gonna let him work away. Uh, I can't stick around while he's doing the work just cause I don't have the time, but I'm gonna try to make it back here and catch some more of the progress at the next stage. So why don't we let him work and I'll see what I can catch next. Well guys, Rui is apparently just too good and too efficient. He is already done the full install of the turbo kit. I didn't get a chance, I didn't get a second chance to make it to his shop uh, while he was working away at it. So we figured just bring it back here and I'm gonna show you the final results. I'll uh, lift the hood, show you the turbo kit from the top, I'll lift it up, show you the turbo kit from the bottom, and then uh, I'm gonna get to tuning this thing and see, so we can see how much it makes. So PRL makes a fantastic kit and it's very complete, like I said in the first part of this video, uh, and that's part of why Rui was able to do his job so quickly, but uh, he killed it and it looks fantastic. Let's get this open. So under the hood, you can barely tell that it's turbocharged. There is a black, it's, it's nice and all blacked out. Charge pipe, filter, but you can't really see anything else. Uh, the things that you can't see, 1,000cc uh, injectors, like I mentioned, the turbo and the manifolds all tucked behind underneath the cowl. Uh, I am running a K-Tune four bar map sensor. The boost, the electronic boost control solenoid is tucked down here um, so that I can control boost via the Flash Pro. But realistically, from the top, if you don't know what, exactly what you're looking for, you would have a hard time telling that this is turbocharged. Uh, there's nothing that obviously stands out. It's nice that the kit's all blacked out. Uh, we did have to change up a couple little things because my setup is slightly different than a stock 8 Gen. I am running the K-tuned drive-by-wire 72 millimeter throttle body, so the coupler that was provided doesn't match, so we ended up switching it up to a Track 1 coupler. But that's about it from up top. Uh, why don't I lift it up and show you everything underneath? All right, so with the car up in the air, I can definitely show you a bit more about this turbo kit than what you can see from the top. Uh, let's start around the turbo area. And it's hard to see, but there is off, there, there's not a lot of space to work with and the PRL kit does a fantastic job of tucking a fairly large turbo in that space. So Rui did a fantastic job. Everything's tucked away, all the heat protection stuff's installed. The downpipe bolts up directly to my original K-Tune three inch exhaust. The one thing about the exhaust is right at the flange, it is technically two and a half, I believe. So at some point it would probably be a good idea to cut off a bit of this flange basically and make it true three inch all the way through. But that is not gonna happen today because we are gonna tune it as is. 
Um, from this angle, we can actually see the dump tube from the wastegate. It is just dumping to atmosphere. It's not recirculated or anything like that. Um, and you can see a bit of the heat protection that was installed. Uh, not a lot to see because everything is so tucked in. But uh, along here, you can see a bit of the charge piping and how it's routed, both down on the driver's side to the intercooler. And it is a same side intercooler setup, similar to what I have on my RSX, but this is a horizontal flow intercooler versus the vertical style flow. It, uh, it should work fantastically, but that's about it from underneath. I know that it's not much you can see, but everything is so well tucked away, there isn't much to see. So uh, I think the only thing left to do is to get started on tuning this thing and see how much power it makes. So why don't I get started?
right guys, all said and done. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. Um, I am actually very happy with the final results. The tune went fairly smoothly. There was a couple hiccups, nothing to do with the turbo kit. The turbo kit has performed flawlessly. Rui did a fantastic job of the install. The only issue I had was the electronic boost control solenoid, which I hadn't activated yet, was causing a, uh, a high boost condition and actually it was kind of intermittent. Some, some pulls would be fine, some pulls would over boost. Uh, I may have left that in the uh, in the video of the polls. We'll see how that turns out in editing. But either way, I ended up having to just bypass the electronic boost control solenoid, even though I technically don't need the electronic boost control and I'm pretty happy with the final numbers. I did want to run it and I wanted to ramp up a bit of extra boost near Redline just to make a bit more power. Uh, I will revisit that. I'm gonna have to sort out what's going on with this electronic boost control solenoid. Could be a bad one, um, I don't know. It was just inconsistent. Some runs were fine, some runs over boosted. But either way, all said and done, super happy with the results. And you know what? I probably shouldn't push my luck because this car is still on the stock clutch like I mentioned. This is a stock clutch and it is making some pretty good power considering it's on the stock clutch. So uh, all said and done, I ran, it ended up running just under 10 pounds of boost. And what I have up on the graph is uh, one of the final runs. So it ended up making 421 horse, 288 or basically 289 foot pounds torque. Uh, at, call it 10 pounds of boost. It was just like slightly under 10 pounds of boost. And I actually have the last data log of the last pull basically. Some of you might be interested in seeing how the turbo performs. So at about, what is this? Almost 3000 RPM, we have about one pound of boost and it builds and uh, basically we have nine pounds of boost at about 5,000, just over 5,000 RPM. And we maintained just under 10 pounds of boost all the way to Redline, which is 85. Kept Redline at 85, that's what it was before when it was NA. VTEC I have set at 4,400, um, just to help it spool the turbo a little bit better. But yeah, super happy with the results. Over 400 wheel horsepower, 10 pounds of boost, and on the stock clutch still. So probably shouldn't push my luck with the stock clutch. It might make more. I've We're not into the 300 foot pounds of torque, and that's kind of where I think it would cause an issue. As you may have noticed, I, ha I do have two graphs up here on the screen. The blue one is the old graph when it was NA. The most power it ever made was 218 wheel horsepower, 161 foot pounds torque, and obviously the red is today with the boost. Uh, and you'll notice huge, huge gains. It's making over 200 more horsepower now with 10 pounds of boost and uh, what's that? 130 foot pounds more torque and more power basically everywhere. It's hard to argue with the power of a turbo setup, especially on these NA K series. It's amazing. This engine's completely stock, super high miles and is making this much power uh, with only 10 pounds of boost. Um, but I do want to revisit this thing and get the electronic boost controller sorted out and raise the boost a little bit. Basically like feed in more boost probably after like 6,000 RPM to see if we can get to like 450 plus on this setup. And, and one other thing I forgot to mention, I am running this on pump gas still. This is on our Petro Canada 94 octane pump gas. I'd love to run E85, we just don't have access to it, so the best fuel that we have is our Petro 94. I could have run it on 91, This it just happens to be on 94, but uh, yeah, either way, thought I should make sure I mentioned that it is on pump gas and not ethanol. But for now, I'm gonna put some miles on the car, I'm just gonna enjoy it and see how long this engine lasts because like I said, it has 330,000 kilometers or 205,000 miles on this engine but it's performing flawlessly. It doesn't burn any oil uh, and it made some great power at 10 pounds of boost. I do wanna thank JSpec Performance for helping me out getting the turbo kit, PRL for making such a great turbo kit, and my friend Rui at Mateus Racing for doing all the work and getting the car done super fast for me. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Um, but that's about it for now. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.